So this is the gate primitives in MyHDL. We've already CD'd into the director of the notebook and we're running the notebook, just typing in Jupyter Notebook things. You get the splash screen and click on, on the notebook. Oh, here it is, opens the title, the table of contents, which is an internal hyperlink system. Um, here we're calling the libraries is, uh, there's the listing of the libraries is, the pretty standards, some auxiliary functions to print stuff back in. And um, so here we have wire high, I, I Simpy expression. I don't know why it rendered like that this time. Um, we have the actual module. Oh, that's going to be converted to Verilog. We have the Verilog conversion version. And I've wrote a function to print it back into the notebook. Look, oh, there's the output from Vivado. Oh, the wire low. Oh, going on. So here we are. Our R with the uh, buffer. Here's our actual test bench. And so we use a random, um, and besides the static values, is we create our signals, we create our test bench, inch, and in here we have a uh, standard delay. A, we call the instance, and so we run the simulation, we get a waveform arm using the MyHDL peak module. We can also get a data frame, and that's a pandas data frame. We can then and run that through, through the SymPy expression that we know as a reference. Do the comparison, do the behavioral check, heck, and our module over a buffer is correct. Heck, by comparing the two columns, which is an amazing feature that uh, my HDL has over traditional HDLs. We have the Verilog conversion, which def the default conversion is Verilog. The outputs, we have the MyHDL to Verilog uh, test bench. So we have to take our values that we used in our previous test and bind them up into an actual single signal. Uh, then we create a module, uh, that's our test bench, and it's using the app block, uh, and we have to kind of do stuff. We have a print command, print data, which has to be used in things. We have our test vector, which is bound to the signal, our device under test, uh, and then we have our uh, actual test function. We create an instance and of this module oh, and then we run on the conversion and with initial value true which sets everything back to the default state we have then the output that there's our test bench into the module well I'm using just this uh, M draw I'll draw the schematic what the boards can do and we have board constraint file oh moving on On more modules, this has this notebook has all the basic modules. Uh, looking on the OR gate because I actually deleted the videos, so I need to run it. So there's our definition. Again, this is the schematic of what a basic OR gate. We have our SymPy expression, expression, and that if you notice the notation is a little weird. We have a truth table generator that I wrote. Uh, it's a function on top of the notebook. Here we use lambda for i to earn the uh, SymPy expression into a fast numerical expression. So again, here's the OR mod, we have the documentation, we have the statement, and and there's a bunch more in there about why we use this, the word OR instead of just the uh, vertical bar or pipe. So we create our uh, tests, which are uh, just the four basic value, the values, and then a bunch of randoms. We have our th test bench. Again, there's our waveform. There's our data frame. Okay. We run a check against the SymPy expression that we've done the Landify on. On the check is true. We run the conversion. And, and here we see the outputs as I've captured. Heard. We bind, bind the test bench up into a test bench so that we can synthesize in the Verilog. We've got the circuit deployment, I mean, essentially what's going to be on the board. We have the board constraint file, which set as the directory from the FPGA to the things. So here in Vivado, we're going to create the project, okay. and I've got the other window open because Vivado likes to go to where it was installed all on Linux, so I'm telling it to go to the directory. Okay. So I create the project, it creates a project right there, I tell it to go to boards, I select the digital board, or category, and I grab the pink Z1. On, on the projects being created, 
and we have nothing in it. It's going to load. So you see there's nothing. So we're going to go to add sources here on the left. Left. I'm going to grab the directory where the uh, output for the myhdl L went to, which is where the notebook is. Is go to add the constraints first. There's plug in in the directory. So I'm going to grab the constraint and it's going to be the or constraint. I want to make sure or that the constraint matches the source and the simulation. And so that's now added the constraint. Go back to add sources again, add now design source. This is the or gate. Eight. Okay, so we want orgate.v, which is the Verilog output from our MyHDL code. Oh, that we can see see the preview up on the right. Add it. And now we still need to add the test bench. And so we add the design, the uh, simulation. And now MyHDL will produce is a default test bench which has tbe underscore do not use that file use the one that says underscore tbv that we specifically created it in the notebook so we also uncheck this is it just it the, always uncheck that at if you can and it just adds a bunch of duplication Asian under the simulation So it's updating the tree. So everything is set to top up because we only have one file in there. And if we have multiples, we'll have to set up to top ops up by using right click. Now the constraints set the target constraints. That means that that source module is going to reference that constraint file aisle, aisle, oh, when it does the uh, bitstream generation. So. Now, uh, the next thing you should do is go to RTL and do the RTL L expansion of the uh, Verilog, which will produce an RTL schematic. I think it takes a minute to run. And so, oh, this confirms that the output Verilog uh, code is good, good if it can produce things. Now, we still need to run a simulation on it, on it, but uh, things. Now I do screen captures, that's what's in the notebook. The important thing is to get if that information at the very top. Now I'm going to hit run simulation. I'm going to run a behavioral simulation. And just real quick on this. Now the simulation is going to run and it's going to it's going to end right when it hits that finish and it's going to flag all that code. Don't worry about it, it's supposed to do that. Close that. Now the problem is, is it only shows the far right, so we have to right click and hit full view. We see everything. Thing. Thing. I like to turn on the test signal all vector thing into um, unsight either onsite decibel convert to check the confirmation of the conversion or change it to uh, binary binary to confirm everything. And we do that by right clicking on signal and going to radix x and changing what the display A is like. And we can see the waveform arm. I still don't know how to get this out, out to back convert in the notebook with Python on. And yes, I have logged an issue. Uh, so we scroll through. We see that we had just, right now we have to do a visual inspection. We see the visual inspection looks right. All right. Those are two inputs, the outputs. It's acting like an OR gate. Now we can normally we'd go run synthesis, check everything, run implementation, check everything. But this is just so simple that we're just going to close the simulation, and then I should have closed RTL as well. Oh, because it doesn't show the log on 2017.4 Vivado. But then we go to to um, generate bitstream, and which is going to automatically run synthesis and implementation. We run that, and three minutes and fifty sec uh, and fifty seconds later, later this will all be completed. It it so it says write bitstream complete. It's done. 
So then we open the hardware things. We have our board connected on a USB. We're not using the SOC. We just open the target or the board. We hit program board. Make sure -er that the mod, the bitstream name matches the source name name. And we do the confirmation and I'll make that video. Oh, you can see it linked. And so now how uh, the board is programmed and we can then go back into ooh, ooh, because it did when we generate the bitstream and we can go to synthesis and all that. So if I open up synthesis, is it's gonna open up a bunch of information. Asian, for instance, what part art of the FPG was actually used. Is we can see that one little spot out that the core gate was implemented in. And I'm not gonna go into the, all the, because I still don't understand all of it, it of how the FP, modern FPGAs work because they use lookup tables instead of what you see in a lot of textbook old textbooks. Um, there you can see all the resources that were used. Is the biggest thing though is to go to the schematic, ick, and then I just drag that up, up, and make sure I capture her with the screenshot uh, and put put it in the notebook. Uh, but you can see all the buffers added, and you see how, how it uses a lookup table instead of an actual gate, okay? Because it's an FPGA, okay? And similarly, I can go oh, to open um, implementation, and. And which is allows me to do board planning, adding, which is the uh, so what they mean by board planning is the uh, pins from the uh, FPGA, how they're mapped to the board or whatever, however you have your device. But similarly, you're going to get a schematic. The big thing is just to look at the schematic and the implementation and confirm that it's, own, it's the same as the synthesis. As again, we can do board planning in here, here, but because we use a constraint file, we really don't have to because that pretty much has already done our board planning okay. and so I'm gonna try to run on the extra other simulations now a lot of times I get this to work sometimes it doesn't get to work or right, but because of the very cryptic nature of the error messages in Vivado oh which I blame on them still using tickle all scripting and I I have no idea yeah what's going on because again it's really really cryptic like, and again, no, but I don't know Tickle, and I don't want to know Tickle. So, um, so, so now I'm going to close that synthesize design on the implementation, and we're going to actually load the NOR gate so I can show you how to use, use how to uh, set up, up the top modules and use multiple files. Isles in Vivado. Oh. Um, So I'm gonna go add sources. Is I'm gonna add my design source first. I'm going to select the NOR gate. Hit OK. Add it. Now it's gonna update. Eight. We'll see it. Eight, but we see it's not bold, so it's not the top module yet. So we're gonna add, now add the constraint. Now this constraint is essentially the same thing, but if we were we were actually using something that had different constraints, we definitely want to make sure or that the, we had the right constraint to the right design file, and we add the simulation source. So again, and we need to select the right right thing, which I end with a tbv e dot v a. So you make sure that's not checked. Everything is updating. But again, and our OR gate right now is still our top module, so we need to go in and right click on the NOR gate. Right? So we right click on it, hit set as top. So in other words, that is the top. It's gonna look look, it's gonna go through there and see if there's any other dependencies because this has no dependencies. Doesn't matter, we just make sure that's on top. Now we need to set at the constraint ain't target. So again, and if we use using dis different constraints, this would be a much bigger deal. But again, try to make sure or your constraint file name matches your source file. I'll, oh, we right click on it, set to target. Again, and simulations, we set it to target. 
I set it to the top. So that's now our top module. Module, so everything's ready to run. And we're going to do our check to make sure or that the conversion from the Python MyHDL to Verilog was correct by doing RTL. That's our first check. Like, so we run it. And we see that we get an or followed by a not gate. Eight hey, now in traditional bullet in most digital logic books are going to talk about NOR gates being the basic thing, but in FPGAs that's kind of not true. So we then run our simulation, and again it's going to find a flag on that finish thing. Don't worry about it. Just go to the waveform, right click, full view. We see that it acts just like a NOR gate. Hey, again, I'd love to be able to get this data out, out back into Python to do final confirmations. And, and we're going to close the simulation. And we're going to go generate bitstream. And yes, this will take a while. So bitstream's done. Uh, we go O oh, to O oh, targets. It's we target the board. Or we hit hit program board, and run it. So that's uh, my, using my HDL to synthesize very basic gates. Hey, it's uh, first time using uh, OpenShot to do the video recording. So then editing. So uh, interesting. Thanks. Bye.